As a kid, I used to come to this hillside and sit and watch uh, the panorama of the, of the wildlife. So I, I spent many hours just sitting here on the, on the hillside. I, I always call it the hill. This little dip that goes down into the marsh basin, I would come and sit on top here and watch the wildlife for you know, hours on end. I was always watching the ducks and geese, Canada geese, uh, mallards, a whole variety of duck species and other geese as well. The flight of a goose or a duck has always inspired me. I, I just love to see these birds. I knew they were uh, uh, attached to that lake for their survival and lived in the lake. Uh, you know, as a kid, I realized that was, that was their home, just as this old farmhouse was my home. For more than 70 years, Bob Hartkoff has walked the grounds of his family's farm in Swift County, Minnesota. As a young boy, Hartkoff wandered through the shallow wetland that grew beside his father's crops. The wetland was called Mud Lake, an ironic name that failed to describe its beauty and wildlife. But when it came to crops and springtime floods, Mud Lake seemed a more apt description in the minds of local farmers. Hartkoff, on the other hand, saw Mud Lake as a classroom. He studied the plant life and the migration patterns of local waterfowl. The education inspired him to become a high school science teacher. However, the farm Hartkoff sees today does not resemble the farm he knew as a child. People at that time did not farm fence row to fence row. There were little nooks and crannies on the farm, little wild weed patches. Cornfields had lots more vegetation in them, uh, and uh, that, in fact, uh, led to more wildlife uh, over the entire farm. Hartkoff was not alone in seeing the changes in the Minnesota landscape. My dad was a great local historian in that he knew there were big stories in small places. And, it, and we would drive by these areas that at one time you'd say, you know, there used to be a lake out there. Uh, and so we'd look out there and try to imagine what that lake might have looked like when there was nothing but corn or soybeans growing there at the time. Any wetland that's destroyed, the biodiversity just goes to zero. It becomes a biological desert with the exception of corn, soybeans, or whatever, if it's farmed, which means you virtually have no wildlife. As the 20th century progressed, attitudes about wetlands changed dramatically. The government initiated policy to help increase the amount of food American farmers could produce. Wetlands became the enemy. If removing water gets me more, it's pretty hard to have another discussion if that discussion is on the surface. I was devastated, you know, I was just like losing one of my closest friends or family members when this marsh was drained. Hartkoff decided he could not stand by and let these wetlands disappear into history. So in 1959, he picked up a 16 millimeter camera and began documenting the ditching work near the family farm. I remember Bob indirectly from my days in, in college and uh, was fairly impressed with the, or very impressed with the first time I saw the film that he produced, uh, Cry of the Marsh, and uh, remembered it. it. It made a lasting impression on me. And I thought it was so remarkable that something that had a, I think a pretty significant impact on me in high school was coming back to me so much later in my career. As I started to learn more and more about Bob's story of a, what amounts to a 35-year odyssey to restore that one particular wetland, I, I couldn't help but start to share his passion for its restoration, I guess. Hartkoff's film touched off a debate that still rages today. To drain or not to drain, 
That is the question. And it's a difficult one to answer in Minnesota and other states dominated by agriculture. For most of the 1960s and 70s, the mighty industry of crop production took front stage. Farming throughout, throughout centuries in Minnesota has been like that. Just the God-given right to do what you want with your own property. In recent years, sentiment about wetlands and farming has changed the public has begun to understand the value of restoring wetlands and the great social cost of industrial fence row to fence row farming. Within this debate, many people stand between extremes. Conservationists call for protection of wetlands, while farmers try to maintain a profitable farm. Politicians and the public are left to decide where to find the middle. When it's somebody else's property upstream, we're all in favor of ducks, and we think we're ecologists upstream. But as soon as the water touches our land, we become engineers, and we want to send that water downstream as fast as we can. So we want the guy upstream to dam and fill his land up with lily pads and natural grasses and everything will hold the water. But as soon as that water gets close to us, we want pumps, we want diversion channels, we want ditching. And we saw a case a number of years ago where a fellow really drained what was called a lake and uh, just put it on a neighbor. And so he improved probably 30 acres of his own land, but he probably ruined 25 of another, uh, acres of another farmer's land. What are we doing here? We got one arm of the government paying farmers to behave poorly. We have another arm of government paying farmers to try to correct the problems that are created over here. That's just craziness. Hartkoff and others think the time has come to make serious changes in farm policy. The disappearance of wetlands from Minnesota has made a negative impact on our environment and affected our quality of life. The ecosystem deteriorates immediately. The water's gone. Once the water's gone, usually the uh, dry marsh bed is burned off, which is the case in this case. Uh, the marsh bed was burned and uh, no wildlife period, the, the wildlife's gone. The consequence of draining these small depressions into ditches that flow to main stem rivers is that we have more frequent flooding and we have more severe flooding than we ever had in the past. Hartkoff continues his quest to see wetlands restored on his family farm, but neighboring farmers continue to drain their plots, which drains Hartkoff's land as well. Though that may seem unfair, by federal, state, and county statutes, it's completely legal. Hartkoff's quest has become a symbol for the larger debate about finding a balance for our environment, a balance between industrial profits and a healthy ecosystem. It's an ongoing debate, and it's, it's not an easy one to stop. No. Not an easy one to stop. Because when they're paying big production costs, they need big yields. You can take a thread out of a quilt and one thread, you may not notice it, but you start plucking threads out and pretty soon you look at it one day and now you've got a big hole in it and it's not the same beautiful thing that you once enjoyed and uh, you received from your grandparents a generation ago. You know, humans wouldn't think of going into the Museum of Natural History and destroying it, burning it down to the ground, but yet we go into a marsh which is many times more beautiful than a museum with all these living species for the entire countryside to observe without having to pay a fee to go in to look at dead specimens in a museum and we destroy it. I can't, I can't buy that and I can't stop from working on the restoration of a living, biodiverse, beautiful system.